When creating an Excel table, it's sometimes helpful to give your table a name. Let's name this table Bakery Sales by Month. Since this is the title of our table, we want to increase the font size to help it stand out. First, highlight the cell, then go up to the ribbon, and this drop-down selector allows you to choose the font size by point. I'm going to do something greater than 11, which it's set to now, something like 18. While this drop-down allows us to specify our font size, we can also use these two buttons to the right of the drop-down to change our font size in small increments. This feature is helpful when you want to see how your formatting would look with different font sizes. I actually like how it looks with 14, so let's stick with that. To make my table even more readable, I could format my font using bold, italics, and underline, found right here in the Home tab of your ribbon. Let's experiment to see what looks good by first clicking bold, then clicking italics, and then clicking underline. These features stack upon one another, so if you do not unclick your previously selected commands, it will bold and italicize and underline your text. You can also access all of these features using the shortcuts Control B for bold, which actually just removed my bold, Control U for underline, which actually just removed my underline, and Control I for italicize, which actually just removed my italicize. I actually liked how it looked with bold, so I'm going to hit Control B one more time. While this table title is helpful, there is a better way to represent this. We can make it more visually sensical by using a feature called Merge Cells. Merging cells means that you take two or more cells and combine them together. To merge cells, first highlight the set of cells that you want to merge. For our case, let's highlight the entire row of cells above our big table. You can either click Merge and Center or use the shortcut Alt-H-M-C. This action makes all of the cells that you highlight into one continuous cell and centers the contents. However, there is a limitation with the merge and center that we should discuss. Say, for example, I wanted to highlight the percentage of sales column. If I try to do this using shift and my up arrows, we can see that when I reach the merge cell, it actually highlights all of the columns that we merged across. Merging cells actually makes all of the cells that you merge into one, so now all of these columns are one big cell. While merging cells is typically fine at the top of spreadsheets, it can cause problems if you put them in the middle of spreadsheets. There's a better way to do this, but let's first unmerge all of our cells. You can do this by first highlighting the merge cell and clicking Merge and Center again, or using the shortcut Alt-H-M-U. We use U as the final key this time to unmerge instead of merge and center. Okay, with the same cells still highlighted, let's click this little box and arrow at the bottom of our alignment section of our home tab. This dialog box should pop up. Under the horizontal dropdown, let's choose center across selection. Click OK or hit enter and now we see that the text is once again centered over our table. Visually, this appears the same as merging and centering. However, as we hover over each one of the cells, we can see that Excel has not merged these cells. Each of these cells are still, still independent. We can also see that when we hover over the cells, the name bar only displays the value for the leftmost cell, while all the other cells are blank. This is because the center across selection does not actually merge the cells, but rather just gives the appearance of merge cells. If we once again go and try to highlight again, we don't run into the same problem as before. Okay, moving on. If we look at the columns of our table, one of the things that you'll notice is that the column sizes are not perfectly fitted to the size of their contents. This is because we've been manually adjusting the size of our columns by clicking and dragging to our needs, which is an imprecise way of creating a spreadsheet, but helpful when you're trying to move quickly. Excel has a way that automates your ability to automatically widen these cells. First, highlight the entire range, then go to Format, up here in the Home tab of your ribbon, and choose Auto Fit Cell Width or you can use the shortcut Alt-H-O-I. 
This will incorporate all of the data points in its calculation of column width and give you the perfect column width. That's one way to fit the width of your columns. However, if you would prefer your spreadsheet's columns to have a consistent width, then you would actually want to specify a width value. To do this, go to the Home tab of your ribbon, choose Format, and then Column Width, or use the shortcut Alt-H-O-W. Here, you can hard code a numerical value of your column width. Let's increase our width and estimate it to be something around 12. We can see that Excel has made the columns wider. However, we can see that the text inside of this bottom row no longer really fills the white space above it. So now I need to adjust the row height. Just like the column width, you can change the row height by either hard coding the value or using the auto fit feature. This time, I'm going to use the auto fit feature to have Excel do the estimating for me. With the cells that you care about highlighted, I'm gonna use the shortcut this time instead of the ribbon. I'm gonna use the shortcut Alt H O A, and we can see that Excel has auto fitted the row height for me. Okay, our table already looks a lot better with the formatting we've done so far. However, we could make it look even better by changing the text alignment of some of our cells. There are six major types of text alignment that can be found right here in the home tab of your ribbon. Take a second to pause the video and play around with it right now. Okay, welcome back. For my headers, I would like to center align and middle align. So to do this, Let's highlight, and then I'm gonna use the shortcut here instead of clicking the buttons. To center align, it's Alt H A C, which would align center. And then if I want to align middle, it would be Alt H A M. That looks a lot better. One last thing I want to do is differentiate the items in the bakery with this monthly sales row, which is a calculated field that adds up all of the values. To do this, I'm gonna add an indent. And I could do this by going in and entering the cell and then adding two white spaces. However, I would not recommend this approach because it might mess up your calculations or formulas down the road. I'm gonna undo this with Control Z. Instead, I would recommend using the increase or decrease indent button. So since I want to indent this, I'm gonna increase indent twice. 